Hey, thanks for joining us today at the Technical Institute. Today we're going to be talking about Ground Control Travel Trailer. You'll probably hear me refer to it as Ground Control TT a few times throughout this video. Same thing. That's going to be our electric leveling system for our travel trailer units. Now, we're going to be focusing on operation through the OCTP. That stands for One Control Touch Panel. We're also going to be focusing on operation through the auto level touch panel. Now this guy is going to be located on the outside of the coach, just like you see here, either in a pass-through bay or storage compartment. Some OEMs might mount it directly to the side wall of the coach. That's up to their preference, but it is typically located on the driver's side. This is where we're going to want to spend the most of our time operating the system. We don't really want to go inside to operate unless we have an active error code. Then we'll have to go to the OCTP which is mounted on the inside of the unit to figure out what that error code might be. The reason why we want to stay out of the coach sharing operation is excessive movement can throw off the leveling sensors that are part of this system and cause the system not to auto level properly. The other thing with ground control TT is that you can have a few different configurations as far as jacks go. Now you're always going to have that tongue jack up front. That tongue jack is just there to help you get unhooked or hooked back up to your tow vehicle. The other setups you can have would be C jacks or power stance jacks. And I'm going to take you underneath the unit here in just a second so you can get a better look at those. Those C jacks come in a 3K variation. 3K stands for 3,000 pound or their capacity. So this coach right back here is actually the aftermarket version. So it has four 3K C jacks. So two C jacks up front and two C jacks in the rear. The other setup you could have would be the C jacks up front and these vertical 5K acting jacks in the rear. So that's all just OEM preference. Operation, other than how the legs move, operation is 100% the exact same. All right. So the sequence of operation, whether you have C jacks or these vertical acting 5K jacks in the rear, is going to be the same throughout. The other option with these vertical acting jacks. Typically these guys will come with the standard foot pad that's held in by this snapper pin. Now, if you're looking for that jack to have a little bit more reach, so this jack right here has 12 and a half inches of stroke. So off of the motor, it can run this jack down 12 and a half inches. If you're looking for a little bit more reach though, you can get these foot pads still held in by this snapper pin that'll give you about five inches roughly of additional reach. All right, so the jack's only gonna go down 12 and a half inches off the motor, but if you're looking for a little bit more reach, so maybe you can contact that ground a little sooner, or maybe you're in kind of a weird camping spot, these guys can be purchased to add after the fact to your jack legs. And they simply just slide right down on top of that, just like that. And then we just insert our pin to hold that foot pad in place. And then that's all you have to do to get that guy working. Again. Now, this is a four point leveling system. So as I mentioned just a second ago, that tongue jack up front is just there to get you unhooked or hooked back up to the truck. You'll see as we go through the leveling sequence here in a little bit, that that tongue jack will be floating in the air sort of. So if you've owned a travel trailer before, you're used to having to leave that tongue jack on the ground to support the weight of the coach. This is a leveling system. It's a four point leveling system. So that tongue jack is designed to retract during that auto leveling sequence. It may not retract all the way. It may only retract partially. That's okay. Go ahead and leave it there. That's going to be your best option. All right, you'll get the best stability out of the four leveling jacks if we don't try and lower that tongue jack back down to the ground. All right, down here you can get a better idea of what we call the C-jacks, also known as power stance jacks. These jacks right here, this is actually an aftermarket install, so they are actually connected. Right in the center we have a support bar that helps connect them and just give them a little bit more rigidity. Other than that, they operate independent of each other. When people get a first glance at these, they may assume that they're stabilizer jacks because they have these yellow arms. These yellow arms here, these jacks here, are actually designed to level this coach. Stabilizer jacks, are also commonly referred to as stab jacks, are just designed to stabilize the coach. So these 
sea jacks are fully capable of actually leveling out that coach to the position that you desire. <clears throat> Other than that, each one of them has a motor that operates independent. And in this situation, the four C jacks on this coach are what we're gonna use to level that coach. So it is a four point leveling system. As I mentioned previously, that tongue jack on the front is just there to help you get hooked up to your tow vehicle and then unhooked. Let's go ahead and talk about getting unhooked from our tow vehicle. So the tongue jack here is meant to help with hitching and unhitching from that tow vehicle. There's actually three points of operation for that tongue jack. You've got right here on the tongue jack itself, you've got the extended retract switch there. You've got the auto level touch pad. Once you turn this auto level touch pad on, the up and down arrows here will either extend or retract that tongue jack, or you have the OCTP. We would encourage you to just go ahead and do it. You've already backed in, just do it right here from the tongue jack itself. The other option for the tongue jack, just like you have for those vertical acting 5K jacks, you have the foot pad extension for that tongue jack. Foot pad's a little bit wider, take up a little bit nice base, and it gives you a little bit more reach, all right? So you've got 18 inches of stroke on this guy. This gives you another approximately five inches of reach. The other nice feature about this tongue jack, once it's integrated into the ground control TT system, is that in the past, with the standard tongue jack, you would have to hit the extend button, press and hold it, and stand there as you're operating it, just like this. With the ground control TT system, there's an auto extend feature. Now that auto extend feature only works from the tongue jack itself. So to get that auto extend feature to work, we're gonna go ahead and press and release the extend button twice, and then we're gonna hold it on the third time. After about five seconds, we'll let go of that extend switch, and this will extend all the way down to the ground. Now before we do that, we've already gone ahead and unhooked all of our chains, our seven way, so we're ready to go ahead and auto extend it. Do not do the auto extend feature if you haven't done the pre-work to get unhooked from your truck. So we'll go ahead and hit the extend button twice, press and hold it in on the third time. Count about five seconds. You see it go ahead and pause here for me. And go ahead and let go. It'll extend all the way down to the ground. One reason that won't work is if you have an active error code on the system. So for instance, if you have low voltage or some other error, the auto extend feature won't work for you. You'll have to clear that error code first. Another thing you wanna do before you go ahead and start any leveling sequence, even if it's just unhitching, make sure you got good battery, make sure you're plugged into shore power. Having those things will make this system operate appropriately. Now once it gets down to the ground all the way, it's gonna push up and then push up a little bit more. It may not clear completely, so you may still have to go ahead and press the extend button to lift it past the hitch, but still a better option than standing here and holding the extend button. It might push up a little bit more here, or it may not. If it doesn't, we can see that we haven't quite cleared the hitch yet, so all we have to do now is press and hold that extend button a little bit more to go ahead and clear the hitch the rest of the way. Now we're down here at our quick level touch pad. That's this five button touch pad. Uh, like I said, that'll be located either in a baggage door compartment like this, or depending on the OEM, it may be mounted right directly to the side wall on the outside of the unit. Now, to turn this touch pad on, you just go ahead and press and release the up and down arrows right there, and we'll get this solid green light. Now, solid green means that the system is on. It's uh, ready to accept some commands from you. If it's blinking green, that means there's something, one of the jacks is actively moving, or maybe a pair of jacks. Solid red means low voltage, and if it's flashing red, that means some, there's some sort of active error code in the system, and we would clear that and determine what that error code is from the OCTP inside of the coach. So simply, to go ahead and lower that tongue jack down from the ground here, this up and down arrows here will only operate the tongue jack on your ground control TT system. If you want to operate the rest of the system, you have the auto level button, the hitch height button, and the retract all buttons. But right now we need to get this unit off of our tow vehicle. So we're going to come up here, we're going to hit that up arrow, and that will extend our tongue jack down to the ground.
now that we've either unhooked the coupler from the hitch with either just using the tongue jack here from the extended retract switch or the quick level touch pad, now that they're clear, we can go ahead and move the tow vehicle to a safe distance. So we've moved our tow vehicle out of the way. We have a fully charged battery up front and we are connected to shore power. We do not want to try to operate the ground control system without a battery or without being connected to shore power. We want to be able to maintain that battery by being connected through the shore power cord. <clears throat> also, the system draws its power from the battery directly. So if there's no battery, you're going to have operational concerns right off the get-go. Next, before we go through the auto level sequence, we're on a nice solid surface right here, concrete floors, but you may be at a campground that's dirt, mud, gravel, sand, something where it may be loose or the potential for the jacks to sink into it. So we would recommend in, that, in, that, in those situations that a uh, two by six, a block of wood, um, those buckets, anything along those lines to help give that jack foot pad sort of a greater surface area of contact, that'll improve the jack stability on the ground, which overall will improve the leveling stability inside that coach. You'll notice it right off the bat, all right? If you're going through that auto level sequence and you're on, surf, on a uh, surface that's allowed to shift or cause the coach to shift, that can also impact the leveling sequence, so that's something to be careful or aware of. So first step, tow vehicles at a safe distance, We'll come down here to our auto level touch pad and turn it on by pressing and releasing the up and down arrows at the same time. Simply press and release. The green arrow is on. As we mentioned, the system is ready. It's activated. And right now, all we have to do is hit the auto level. Now, before we did that, or before we do that, the front of the coach, we're going to want that nose to be just above level slightly. Mentioned previously, that the hitch feature, this hitch height feature, that nose needs to be pointing up just slightly. So naturally, in the majority of cases, once you take it off your tow vehicle, it should already be sitting at a positive disposition. Now that we're in that location, we'll go ahead and hit the auto level button. Now that light's gonna start to blink green. That's gonna let you know that there's communication from our controller to our jacks. Now that tongue jack's gonna go ahead and shift to get it to sort of a level or neutral position. Once that's done moving, our two front sea jacks right here are gonna deploy. Now that our sea jacks are deploying, they're going to take the weight of the coach on the front side here. So these are those leveling jacks. They're meant take the weight of the coach. So you can see they're lifting up. Our control is communicating with two sensors inside the coach. And that's how this coach knows that the coach is moving in either a positive or negative position. Once they've taken the weight of the coach, now that front tongue jack is gonna retract for 20 seconds. You can set your watch to it, it'll retract for 20 seconds. You may notice that it's still hanging in the air once it stops or depending on how close you were to the ground to begin with, it may retract all the way. Ours is gonna be sort of extended a couple of inches still. That's perfectly acceptable. You do not need to extend that back down to the ground. In fact, we would encourage you not to. So you can see that the tongue jack still hanging in the air. The front of the coach adjusted again to our preferred zero position or what we consider level. And now our rear jacks are deploying. It's gonna go through a sequence. It's gonna dance, excuse me, it's gonna dance around and verify this, that this coach is level. Speaking previously of that tongue jack, we don't encourage you to deploy that back down to the ground. It's a four point leveling system. So if you deploy that tongue jack at the end back down to the ground and put weight on that tongue jack and lift that unit up with that tongue jack, we're gonna take weight off these two front C-jacks. So essentially all you've done is taken that four-point leveling system and turned it into a three-point leveling system, and you're gonna notice a lack of stability 
towards the front of the coach here. So leave that tongue jack partially extended like you see here. It's perfectly acceptable, and that's how we prefer uh, the operation go. You can see now it's still blinking. It's just doing a systems check, getting this coach to the level of position that we desired it to be. Now that level position is towed to the controller during the manufacturing process. So when the OEMs or the manufacturer of this coach build these, they set that zero position into it. So right now, that light's no longer blinking. That being said, the coach is to the position we set that zero point at. So we've gone through operation on the quick level touchpad on the outside of the unit, and that's really the way we encourage you to use the leveling system. Being inside the unit while it's going through that auto level sequence can make the system not put it in the exact level position that you may be looking for. So if you're operating it from the outside of the coach, walking in the coach and moving things around won't be happening because you'll be outside leveling. If you find yourself needing to operate the leveling system from the OCTP, that's perfectly fine. If you're inside the coach doing that, you just want to make sure you're standing still. All right. So let's go ahead and get a better look on navigating through the OCTP and also some of the different options on this screen for the leveling system. All right, here we're looking at the most current revision of the OCTP or One Control Touch Panel. If you use the One Control app or if you're able to use the One Control app on your specific unit to operate your leveling system, your cell phone, if updated to the current software, should look very similar to what we see here. Now, just because you have an OCTP inside your coach does not mean you're gonna have all the options that you see here on our screen. For instance, off here to our right, this is our favorites screen. So we have some awning lights, bathroom lights, and various other lights. On your particular coach, you may just be able to operate your leveling system. Now to get to our leveling system, over here on the left-hand side of the screen, we have home, devices, settings, and help. What we want to do is we want to hit devices and then off to the right hand side of the screen we'll have awnings, HVAC, leveling, lighting, monitor panel, and slides. Again, that's just for our specific coach. You may only just have leveling to operate. So we'll go ahead and click on the leveling option. Once we open up the leveling option, you can see that we have leveler at the top. It'll give us our voltage. We're currently at 13.6 volts. We're operating our leveling system we're going to be very successful with that amount of voltage as we go to draw power from any of these jacks you'll see that voltage start to drop this very first highlighted screen it says info if i want to get into that panel i go ahead and hit enter and that's going to go ahead and give me the position of the coach so currently we're sitting front to rear we're sitting at point excuse me positive 0.7 and then side to side front and side to side rear those are reading there as well. So we actually have two leveling sensors in this coach that allow it to read front side to side versus rear side to side. Now we go ahead and hit done to exit the info screen. That'll take us back to our main home screen here. If we scroll down, we can enter auto retract. If we hit enter on auto retract, that's gonna, gonna go ahead and start auto retracting our jacks. If we scroll down one more time, that'll highlight manual mode. To enter manual mode, we would simply hit enter. All right, well, I'll show you that difference here in one moment. Over here on the right hand side of the screen, you can see that our right and our rear sections are flashing. What that means is that the right rear portion of the coach is lower than any other portion of the coach. So, for instance, if it was just the rear section flashing, that would indicate that the whole rear of the coach is low. Or, if just the right side was flashing, that would indicate that the right side of the coach is low. On this screen, on the home screen, the only thing we can operate from here, by either extending, you'll see that it highlights yellow, or retracting, is the front tongue jack. If we want to operate manually any of the four C jacks on our system, or whatever the four leveling jacks you may have on your system are, on manual mode, which we still have highlighted, we'll go ahead and hit enter. Now you can see in manual mode, over here to the left, it says manual mode at the top, 
Then we got front to rear, side to side front, side to side rear. So the information that we saw in the info screen shows up in manual mode as well. Over here off to the right, you can still see that the right and rear sides are flashing. We can still highlight the extend, which is positive, or retract for negative. And you can see as I highlight these, the option to operate these jacks became available. So if I hit front, the two front C jacks will operate. If I hit rear, the two rear C jacks will operate. Left will do left, right will do right. The other option I have is I can hit front left or front right or left rear or right rear just to operate that one individual jack. Lastly on this screen or anywhere in the leveling system here, if I hit done, I can go back to the, the home screen for the leveling system. And right down here underneath the negative sign, I have a favorites device. Right now, currently that switch is set to no. But if I go ahead and switch that to yes, that will actually add it to my home screen so that I can click right on that and access my leveling system that way. So we click the home button there. And when we first turn that home button or turn that screen on, it'll be at the home screen. And at the very top, before we didn't have the leveling option, but now it's right here. And below that, we still have all of our lighting options. So if you want to add something that you use often, maybe your awning or your slides, right to the right hand side of that screen, you could do that just like I did with that leveler system. Let's go ahead and talk about setting zero point for our ground control travel trailer system. Now, zero point is what you determine the coach is level. So if you want your coach to sit perfectly level after you hit the auto level button, we would encourage you to set a four foot bubble level on the floor of your coach and level that coach out front, or excuse me, manually level that coach out front to rear and then turn that bubble level so it's facing left to right and then adjust according to that. If you would prefer that your countertops be the most level surface so things don't roll off of them, you can do that as well. Or maybe when you open a door, the door swings back closed and you want it left open. You can level your coach so that door, the doors operate more like you would wish they would. So that level position is completely up to you. So let's go ahead and walk through the appropriate procedures to actually set that zero point so you can have a more satisfied leveling position. So first things first, we're gonna go ahead and open up our leveler icon. So we're gonna tap where it says leveler. We're gonna open up our main screen here. The first thing we have to do is we have to manually level the coach to the position we want. So we'll come here where it, where it says leveler. So right at the top it says leveler. We're gonna tap that six times. So one, two, three, four, five, six. <clears throat> if it doesn't work for you the first time, that's okay. It is six times, you just try again and again. Um, if if you're worried about your fingers, or if you don't think the touchpad is receptive to your finger touch, you can use a stylist that you would for any other type of touch screen. That's perfectly acceptable. Next thing it's gonna do, it's gonna give you a warning. It says you're adva entering advanced features. If you're trying to set your zero point here, you're gonna wanna go ahead and hit yes. If you've inadvertently hit the leveler name at the top there six times, go ahead and hit no. After you hit yes, it'll say setup. Zero mode, press enter. So we'll go ahead and hit enter. Now what it says is zero point calibration, press enter to set. If I'm already in the exact position I want to be, I'm gonna go ahead and hit enter. If I need to move anything around, I'm going to go ahead and either extend what I need to extend or retract whatever I need to retract to get myself in the position I prefer. After I'm done doing that, I simply go ahead and hit enter It'll say zero point stability check, please wait. Do not want to be moving around inside the coach at all. Stand still. After it says please wait, it'll say set successfully, and then it'll go right back to the home screen just like it is here. Keeping in mind, you do not have to set zero point every time you move, all right? Once you set it, forget it, it's done. It's a one-time thing based on your preferences. If you're finding that you are having to readjust your zero point every time you move the coach, chances are something is mounted loose as far as the sensors go or it mounted incorrectly. That would be need to be corrected in order for the zero point to work appropriately every time like it should for you. 
All right, here on the screen, you can see that we have a right front jack fault. You may also experience other specific jack error codes. You could potentially have all of the jacks listed there as well. What those specific jack error codes are typically indicated by is a lack of proper voltage. So you pull into the campsite, um, maybe you left some lights on in the, the coach as you were towing, and your batteries, batteries got drained, uh, you're not hooked into shore power, or you simply don't have a battery hooked up. To clear this error code, what we have to do is we're gonna go ahead and press and release the plus sign here. Go ahead and press and hold the front button. That'll extend our two front jacks. Then we're gonna go ahead and press and hold the rear button. That'll extend our rear jacks. And we're looking to extend these jacks a minimum of six inches. All right, so we'll go ahead and press and hold the front button. Keep in mind, you could also experience, excuse me, experience a tongue jack error code. The tongue jack does not need to be extended six inches. You will still have to extend the other four jacks as well, but the tongue jack does not need to be involved in this process at all. So we'll go ahead and get the rear or the front jacks down six inches. We'll drop the rear jacks down six inches. You may need someone out there just letting you know when you're at that minimum six inches, or if you've done it long enough, you kind of get the feel for how long to hold that button for that six inch mark. Once you're done doing that, the screen tells you to go ahead and hit enter to clear the error code. So I'll hit enter. What it will do is it'll start to retract the rear jacks. Then it will move on to, to deploy the tongue jack down to the ground to verify that it's supporting the weight of the coach. And then it will retract the two front C jacks. Like I mentioned previously, we find that this error code happens brand new units um, just being picked up for the first time, or maybe you've had your unit in storage over the winter season. Um, you may get this error code during those processes simply because the battery voltage has dropped below proper operating voltage. We do want to maintain, and you can see right here on the screen, we got that 13.5, so we've got good battery and we're plugged into shore power. We want to maintain good voltage. If we start to see that drop below 12 volts, we're already starting to get into a area where we're going to have trouble operating not only the leveling system, but potentially other components inside the RV as well. Once it's cleared, you'll get back to the main home screen of the leveling system here, and you can continue through with either trying to get hooked back up or finish your leveling process. So now that the auto leveling sequence is complete, we can go ahead and run our slides out, put our awnings out, put our steps down, and get ready to camp. One thing to keep in mind is if you've leveled on a unsteady surface, so let's say something along the lines of dirt or sand, if the coach is able to settle into that at all, you may want to go onto the OCTP and manually level that coach out. We'll show you how to do that or get into that screen here in a moment. Keeping in mind, once you do that manually, uh, manual leveling or manual adjustments, that will disable the hitch height feature. The error code you'll get will get a feature disabled error code. That's okay. We can go ahead and hit enter to acknowledge the error code, but at that point, you'll have to hook up in manual mode back to your truck. You'll have to manually retract the jacks here and then manually raise or lower that tongue jack in order to get your tow vehicle hooked back up. Now that we've finished camping for the week, we can go ahead and run our slides in, run our awnings in, put our steps up, and then we can come back here to the quick level touchpad. Press and release the up and down arrows at the same time. We'll get that green light on so we know that this touch pad is active. Now the next thing we're gonna do is we're gonna go ahead and we're gonna hit that hitch hike button. We're still plugged into shore power, so we wanna make sure we're maintaining our batteries, especially after running our slides in and running our awnings in and doing all that stuff. Before we hit that hitch hike button, just keep in mind, it'll work for you as long as you auto level with the nose above level so the nose was pointing high when you started and you didn't manually level anything during the course of your camping trip. Now if you've done either one of those two things, leveled with the nose below level or manually moved any of the jacks, if you hit this hitch height button, that green light will start to flash red 
On the OCTP inside the coach, you'll have an error code that says feature disabled. To clear that, just go ahead and hit OK, and then you'll have to manually hook back up to your truck. So keeping those two things in mind, make sure you auto level with the nose above zero, and make sure you don't manually move anything if you don't have to. So that being said, let's move down here. We'll hit that hitchhike button, and we'll go through this process. Now the first thing that's going to happen is our rear jacks are going to automatically start to retract. You can already see that that green light's flashing, letting us know that the system is active. Once those rear jacks are fully retracted, the tongue jack is going to go ahead and deploy down to the ground, taking the weight of the coach. Once that tongue jack is down to the ground, then the front seat jacks will adjust, and then if the tongue jack needs to adjust vertically anymore, whether it's up or down, it'll do so when instructed by the controller. Jack made some minor adjustments to make sure we're back at that starting point, and now we got our front seat jacks retracting as we currently speak. Once it's done, the flashing green light will go back to a solid state and we're ready to back our tow vehicle up. We can go ahead at this point, unhook from shore power, and get on the road. So if you find yourself in a position where you've tried to either extend or retract the jack from the touch pad, and you're not getting signal to the jack, or maybe the jack is faulty and you need to get it replaced, each one of our jacks, the 3K jacks, or if you have the vertical acting 5K jacks, has two positions for manual override. Before we get into manually overriding the jacks, the first thing we want to do is take our power wire. It's the rectangular plug with one red and one black wire going into it. We want to unplug that. On the face of this jack, there's a rubber plug and there's a 3 8 override socket or 3 8 override port that you can stick your 3 8 ratchet with an extension in there. On some of the newer jacks, you do have a plastic housing over this. So the rubber cap inside of that is gone, but the rubber cap is on the outside of that plastic housing. Simply pop that off, use your 3-8 extension that's long enough to reach into there, and then go ahead and manually crank that jack up. When it's unplugged, it's incredibly easy. If you leave it plugged in, you'll find that you'll struggle with it a little bit. A standard cordless drill can also be used to manually override this. So if you have the ability to adapt a 3 8 um, extension to your drill, you can go ahead and manually override it with a drill as well. Now on the back side of the motor, or I'm sorry, on the back side of the jack rather, there is a 3 quarter inch hex bolt that you can put your socket on and manually over, override it from the rear as well. On our vertical acting jacks, you also have two points to manually override. On the top, right here, there's a rubber cap, 3H drive as well, and then on the bottom, right where these wires come out, you have that rubber cap as well. That's a 5 16 socket. The easiest method is the top. If you find yourself having to go at the bottom, use your cordless drill, it'll go faster for you. So if you find yourself getting stuck, maybe the jack stop, it, stop getting signal from the controller, or you find that it won't operate from the touch pad, you're not dead in the woods, you can still manually override those jacks. Just go ahead and unplug that power and ground, and those uh, use that manual override procedure, and those jacks will retract for you that way. So we've gone ahead and backed our tow vehicle up. Next step here is we're going to go ahead and retract the tongue jack so that it's hooked back up to the ball of the truck. Now one thing to keep in mind, 
for hitchhike is the travel trailer when we do the hitchhike recognition feature it's going to take the travel trailer right back where we hit or started the auto loading process and we'll get back into why that's important here in just one second but i want to show you the auto retract feature on the tongue jack before we get back into talking about hitchhike now that i've confirmed that the trailer is hooked up to the ball of my truck here I can actually go through the auto retract sequence on the tongue jack. You can only do this from the tongue jack switch. You can't do it from the quick level touch pad or the OCTP. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead I'm going to press and release this switch twice and then I'm going to press and hold it on the third time. You'll hear a little pause in the motor on that third time and then it'll actually start to retract on its own. At that time I can let go of the switch. Go ahead and let go of the switch, and that tongue jack's going to retract itself all the way back to the fully retracted position. Now, going back, talking about what we were speaking of with hitchhike, let's say you had some um, wood that you burned off or some other objects inside the bed of the truck here that were causing the bed of the truck to sit lower. When you take the travel trailer off of the truck, that truck suspension, obviously, is going to get more relaxed but if you still have stuff in the back that now aren't going to be put back in the bed of the truck when you leave you may have to raise the tongue jack up a little bit before you back the tow vehicle in so just keep that in mind it's going to take it back exactly where you started the auto level process but if you change the position or the height of your truck you're going to have to adjust that tongue jack before you back all the way up so just be cautious when you're backing up so you're not running into the travel trailer you can see that the tongue jack is still running. If I were to hit the extend and retract buttons right now, that would panic stop this during this auto retract sequence, just like it would if you were going through the auto level sequence and tapped and released either the extended retract or the Once it's in that fully seated position, it will clutch out like that. It's meant to do that. Now that the jack's fully retracted, all you gotta do is hook up your chains, plug in your seven way, and get going on the road. Let's go ahead and get into some maintenance for our ground control travel trailer system. It's pretty simple, pretty straightforward. The biggest thing for this system that we absolutely want to make sure is 100% good to go is our voltage. So make sure we got a properly maintained battery hooked up to our coach. Make sure we're plugged into shore power before we try to operate anything. If we have those two things set up, we, our leveling sequence will be able to avoid certain air codes that may occur if those two things were either not in place. So make sure you got a good battery, make sure we're plugged into shore power. The next big thing we want to try to maintain is our jacks. If you've got dirt and mud caked up on them or you get debris inside these C jacks, that's going to impact your operating ability of these jacks and potentially cause them to get damaged. So if you have any dirt and debris, uh, maybe you've gone through an area where they use uh, road salt during the winter, you want to hose that stuff off with just a standard garden hose even the city supply side hose would work just fine for that. Other than that, before you go to operate anything, make sure that the ground underneath the trailer is cleared so we're not putting the jacks down in an awkward position if we can avoid it. Also, we wanna make sure that we maintain contact with the tires to the ground. We don't wanna be leveling this coach and constantly lifting those tires off the ground and we do not encourage you and we do not recommend that you do any maintenance to your coach with the jack or using the jacks to lift the coach up off the ground. Doing that, you can uh, get seriously injured um, uh, or hurt somebody else by doing that. Also, if you're leveling constantly and lifting those tires off the ground, that can impact your suspension components and cause the towing to be less uh, than desired. Thanks for joining us today to go over ground control travel trailer. If you have any more questions on it, you can go to lci1.com. We have manuals there for the system. Or maybe your travel trailer doesn't currently have a leveling system on it, but you're looking to upgrade. There is an aftermarket installation manual there as well to give you a better idea of what you might be getting into. Otherwise, you'll find other videos on our website as well, not only for ground control travel trailer, but also for an array of other products that we have. If you have any technical questions, feel free to reach out to our customer care center at 574-537-8900, or you can email them at customerservice at lci1.com. 
And always remember, we do have the My LCI app out there, so you have mobile information as you're traveling through the country.